clean cook stove program to mitigate air pollution has been going on since the 80s um, and there's lots of experts who can definitely provide more background on that but um, you know there's been lots of movements to find a stove that is clean enough to make that climate impact and for so long there's been media coverage that has shown that there hasn't been proven climate and health impact from clean cook stove distributions and so what I've been saying and what we at Next Leaf Analytics have been saying is it's really about getting a stove that's both clean and user friendly for the women in order to get the climate and health impact. Women will adopt a stove if you have the right components in place. And there's three components that we feel are really important. One is affordability. If you have a stove that is both clean and usable, but the woman can't afford it because she's making less than a dollar a day, how this isn't possible. And so what we've done is we've brought climate financing into our program so that women can receive climate credits for using a stove. And that's really why the sensor is important because it measures the actual usage instead of us assuming that a woman is adopting a stove. The second important component is getting a user-friendly stove. How do you know if the stove is user-friendly unless you just ask a woman? But she may not know herself what makes a user-friendly stove. So that's also where the sensors are important. So we measure usage in real time. We have a website where we can see who's using the stove and how much. And then we follow up with the woman to do qualitative survey analysis to basically do an impact study to understand why a woman is or is not using a stove. And some of the things we found out is that a lot of technologies that are out there are just not user-friendly enough. And so what we've noticed is that there are stoves that are less clean but are user-friendly, and then there's stoves that are more clean but are not user-friendly. And so what we've been really excited about is we found a stove manufacturer in India that is a little bit less clean than we want it to be, but it's still more clean than a traditional mud stove. And they, but their stove using our sensor has shown 100% adoption. And we've been measuring both their stove, which is an improved stove, and the traditional stove in the households. And we've seen complete displacement of the traditional mud stove in very preliminary results. Professor Ramanathan actually has spent his whole life researching um, specific all of climate, lots of issues with climate change, but he's really focused on black carbon, and black carbon is the second largest contributor to climate change. And black carbon is one of the biggest pollutants that comes out of the smoke from traditional burning of biomass. And so when you replace traditional biomass cooking with improved cooking, if it's a stove that reduces pollution by 80 to 90%, then you can really get to this element where you are making that climate impact. And there have been studies that have proven this time and time again about the climate health impacts as well as the health impacts. So I think there's two components to sustainability of the stove. So when we're talking about biomass cooking and traditional open fire burning, we're talking about three billion people in the world that are still relying on biomass that we need to be thinking about. So we can't be thinking about just India or just Nigeria and a thousand homes. We do need to be thinking about three billion people and 4.3 million people are dying every year. So how do we reach them? So I think one, is climate financing. We do need to start investing in results-based climate financing. And when I say results-based, I mean actual measurement of stove programs. We need to be starting to fund people like Nextleaf that are doing sensors, and there's tons of groups that are working on sensor development for cook stove interventions. So this is a lot of it is climate financing for actual measured stove programs so we can actually reward people who are mitigating their carbon. It's not just project developers that are mitigating carbon, it's the women. And when we're talking about sustainability, we can't get the stoves away for free. That's not affordable for any of us. We need the women to be paying for the stoves. How do they pay for the stoves? We've proven in 4,000 households, these 4,000 households in 29 villages in India have purchased the cleanest cooking technologies, four strap stoves in their homes, and they've cooked on these stoves. And so we've shown that women can afford to purchase cleanest, the cleanest cooking technologies if you can get investors to fund climate financing. 
the other component is that we can't just keep throwing stoves at women because that's not going to get climate impact. We need to start measuring our stove programs at a small scale before we scale up to a larger scale. So you start at 100 homes, you measure them with sensors, you go back and follow up with the women, see what's working for them. It's not about convincing women to take a stove. It's not about changing her behavior. It's about changing our behavior, changing our approach and our strategy to talk to the women more, understand what she needs, and then give that to her, and then constantly iterate on our strategy. So what we do is we put sensors on stoves. In real time, we monitor the stove usage. And on our website, for each household every month, we calculate how many hours the woman used her stove. Based on that, we have a scientific methodology that our father and my sister helped develop, both from University of California, San Diego, and at NextLeap Analytics, to basically translate stove usage into climate credits, um, and into a carbon mitigation. And so we know based on stove usage how much each woman mitigated in terms of both carbon dioxide and black carbon. Adding black carbon is important because if you just have black carbon, you only mitigate about 1.8 tons per stove, and that's for the cleanest stove. But if you add black carbon in addition to CO2, then you have a total of 5.3 tons per year that each woman mitigates from her stove. So if you're talking about 1,000 households, that's nearly 5,000, it's more than 5,000 tons of carbon you're mitigating from those 1,000 households. And then if we've been rewarding women at $12 US dollars per ton mitigated, and so you can do the math, but that's a lot of money going to these women to afford the stove and a little bit extra. If she uses the stove for all of her cooking, she can make a little bit extra just to keep her for herself to have buying power. So then you're starting to talk about poverty alleviation, economic empowerment, and most importantly, gender empowerment because she has decision-making power in the household. Bangle right now that we've prototyped. It's um, been designed by Intel um, with support from Grameen Intel and Nextleaf supported with the design. And so, um, you know, while we also, while we think it's important to measure the usage of the stove, it's also really important to have our centralized dashboard also have other measurements that are components to air pollution and indoor air quality. And so carbon monoxide is being monitored using this bangle. Um, and so, you know, Bangles are something that Indian women wear every day, and something that's really important to Nextleaf is having technologies that fit in with women's lifestyle. It's not about forcing them to adopt technologies, it's about something they'll be excited to wear. And so, through several iterations that Intel has undergone, and we've field tested this bangle, we've gotten feedback from women. The last version was too big, the women said, and it wasn't pretty enough. And so what, um, what Intel did is that they did a redesign to make it prettier and lighter. And so this is super lightweight. It's really easy for the woman to wear. Um, you're the first, some of the first people seeing it right now. And so actually we'll be sending this to India to be tested with women and households. And we're looking for other countries like the World Health Organization and UNICEF to also pilot this bangle to get feedback. scale-up, Nextleaf Analytics as a company, we do sensors both for monitoring vaccines and cook stoves. We really believe that before scaling any technology, you have to go through a couple, a few iterations of the technology. And so we're doing another field testing round in India in the next month. And we really feel that that's important to inform the scale-up. And so we would really like, and Intel would really like to kind of test this bangle out in different initiatives in different countries um, before we do an actual scale-up. And once we get feedback from maybe two or three countries and maybe about 20 to 30 households, feedback from those women, then we can start talking about scale-up because this would really only cost about 10 to $30 US and it could cost as low as five US dollars at a scalable order.